All right, just a little background. A couple things I want to, want you to keep in mind before you watch this. First of all, Russia is invading Ukraine. There, there's a few separatists, but they're just people who migrated there in the past couple decades. Okay. Most of the people that are fighting right now are Russian citizens. Period. When they get caught, they have Russian passports. They're not Ukrainian passports. Well, also bear in mind that Russia has historically supplied Saddam Hussein's hard right, Ba'athist, whatever you want to call them. And it's those people who are currently in command of ISIL, the Islamic State. Okay, so Russia has always supplied them most of their command structure is comp comprised of Chechens. ISIL started its big thing when Russia started invading Ukraine. Okay, It's called a pincer movement, people. Just because they're getting away with it doesn't mean it ain't fucking happening. Now, what you need to bear in mind is that the separatists in Ukraine launch mortars at their own controlled areas, their own neighborhoods, regularly, have done so for a year now, have been proven, have been caught red-handed time and time again, okay? And they've been gaining ground. They've been taking, while this ceasefire has been happening, They've not only been doing that just to start little conflicts, but they've been gaining ground every single time. Because the Ukrainians have been trying really hard to keep this ceasefire. But, and if you're one of them guys on the ground and people start shooting at you, guess what? You shoot back. Yes, ma'am. Wait, hold up. I, I, I just wanted to say one thing. They got two, two of these girls that do the state briefings. Actually, I think she's the uh, primary one now. The other one got transferred. But me and my wife called them the resting bitch face girls. Because, well, look, that is one glorious resting bitch face right there. ...his concern about the Russian involvement in his country. He said to Parliament today that there were 9,000 Russian service members in Ukraine. And, and they were threatening what he called a full-scale invasion. Um, first, does the U.S share his concern about the stepped up in aggression. Well, as I said yesterday, uh, and I would say again today, we are concerned uh, about ongoing attacks by the Russian separatist uh, forces on the Ukrainian government side of the ceasefire line. Uh, that, uh, I, I spoke to that quite a bit yesterday, and we certainly share his concern about that on those ongoing attacks. What about the figure of 9,000? Uh, as we've also said, it's, it's hard to put an exact number, given the Russian government uh, actively tries to camouflage who they're sending in uh, and weapons uh, that they're sending in. But uh, we know there are, uh, you know, there's a large number of, of Russians there fighting with the separatists. Is there going to be anyone from this building at the meeting in Germany tomorrow that um, Ash Carter is leading? Uh, from the State Department? I'm not sure about that. Let me check. I just have a little bit on that. Uh, there may be, though. So Secretary Carter will conclude his trip with a stop in Germany, as you mentioned. Uh, yes, he will meet with senior U.S. military commanders and U.S. diplomats, so State Department representatives, from several European countries to discuss our posture in Europe with a focus on Russia. It's really modeled after the meeting he had in Kuwait, where, uh, we, which was reported on in the past, but he will discuss the impact of Russian aggression in, uh, in Ukraine on European security and really is an opportunity for him to hear firsthand uh, from certainly from our perspective, uh, the diplomats in the field and also military commanders about the situation. It was not about. No, Russia. but he was brought together people from the region. I believe that was about ISIL, if I remember correctly, to talk to the diplomats and military military commanders and people. Don't ask, don't tell. Serving in the region about that threat, so it's a similar sort of gathering, so, according to his team. Right, but that doesn't presuppose you're going to start all the coalitions. No. Can I 
Uh, what we have said is we are concerned about increasing attacks on the Ukrainian side of the ceasefire line, and that certainly Russia should not take any additional steps. Uh, I'm not asking you to make a, a, a prediction, but do you have reason to believe that there are preparations for a full-scale invasion? Well, I just said I'm not going to make a prediction. We've seen the no, Russian... I'm not asking you to predict. Is there going to be a full-scale invasion? I'm asking if you see evidence of preparations. Be. Well, they, they, I mean, the truth is, Arshad, they have heavy weapons on the border, on the Ukrainian side of the border. I mean, they have heavy weapons, troops, command and control amassed on both sides of the border. So I, I, I'm not sure what additional evidence we would be looking for, but we're certainly concerned about what they already have there. I guess what I was wondering is that, I mean, they, you've said for months now that they have troops, heavy equipment, et cetera, on the long side of the border. Right. Is there anything different now, I guess? Exactly. I, I'm happy to. Scale to I'm happy to check with her and get you with her. What else on this? Sure. Yesterday you said the rebels are responsible for the vast majority of violations of the peace deal. You said you would uh, check how you came to that conclusion. Was, and I was did. That for you. You, they said I would. You. Yes, and I actually read some of these OSCE daily uh, and weekly reports that you were quoting from. I wanted to get familiar with them. These are all. Well, I didn't read all. Two months. Febu it started in, in February fifteenth with implementation so there's more than two months of daily reports but uh, I read some of them just to get familiar with what they look like and what's in them and I think uh, just a couple of points here uh, first uh, our assessment is uh, based on OSCE uh, reporting and other sources of information including the location the kind of weaponry and other evidence uh, that the majority of ceasefire violations as we've said have been committed by the combined Russian separatist forces one thing that sort of struck me about the OSCE report that uh, they, their tabulations and analysis by, by definition do not ascribe blame for who commits these acts. They uh, merely point out <coughs> when they take place. So, I, <coughs> so uh, I've looked at some of them and they say, for example, uh, the special monitoring mission noticed this happening in Luhansk. They don't say who did this. So it's the analysis uh, that we do with this, in addition to location, kind of weaponry, other source of information that leads to our judgment uh, that a majority of these uh, were committed uh, by Russian uh, separatist forces. Again, they don't describe them. Do you have a number of violations that you saw in those reports? Can we take apart your intelligence? Well, there are uh, the reports. Uh, to be fair, don't always have tabulations in that way. Sometimes they talk about specific incidents in a particular city, but again, they don't describe blame. Who come to that conclusion? Well, Do you I have said, a quote from the OSC spokesperson who says that one of the sides is responsible for the vast majority of violations? Uh, you, the OSC does not assign blame for violations. They just they just <coughs> note where violations take so place. Your and analysis, but without a number, you are saying the overwhelming number of violations. So how, but you don't have a number. So you, how we do the you well, how we do this analysis is we take a look at the OSCE report. And we go through them and note where they take place, what kinds of weapons are used, who's operating in that area, who has the ability to use those weapons. We match that up with other information we have uh, that's out there in the public domain, certainly other, other information we have as well, uh, to make a determination, an analytic determination about who was responsible for these different kinds so of violations. Your analytical determination. So we've looked Based at, on a at, body of evidence. At the daily reports of the OSC for, and I for did, the last... We are an independent third party, you Russian bitch. I did this morning as well. Well, we counted uh, the... She's a Khazar with a nose job. ...violations, uh, and you see ceasefire violations and weapons withdrawal violations, and the numbers are about the same. I, I, I cited them well, yesterday, the OSCE, and, and I can do that now. Are those, but, your, so, okay, wait, are those example, your numbers? Because they're not OS, OSCE numbers don't assign blame. I understand. So you're analyzing the reports also... We, and you're we can analyzing do that too. Them. We can see those daily reports. So one of an example of a report, May first. Who's a third party? America. Just outside government control to uh, Nikolaevka, forty-one kilometers south of Donetsk, the SMM, the monitoring mission, saw three what it assessed to be outgoing tank rounds fired from a lo location approximately two kilometers to the north. An incoming round followed, impacting approximately two hundred meters north mm -hmm. of the SMM's position. So, so that is uh, an example, and it looks like one side fires and the other uh, responds. You see that in many in, in many of the reports. Ever been shot at? Wouldn't that make for equal and equal number of violations on both sides? In that very limited uh, example you're noting from May 1st, but we're taking a look at the entire breadth of reporting from February 15th when the Minsk implemented, when Minsk took effect to now, which is more, much more than two months, 
And so if, if you look overall at every single daily report. What about two months? In the last two months. Why are you picking? I'm just curious why you're picking two months. Because I know why. That's because in the past two months, there's been active Russian invasion. And the Ukrainians would be idiots not to be responding in kind. Our assessment is overall since Minsk, which was February 15th, overall since February 15th, a majority of violations has been due. And it is June 4th, 2015. Do you have a number? By the, I, I'm happy to see if there's a number to share. But again, but you, you said yesterday that you, that you would uh, see what that share And I think I've gotten quite is. a bit of information for you today on how we do this. I've looked at the reports you were citing to make sure I was familiar with them. And noted, I think particularly that, again, the OSCE does not assign blame. They tabulate uh, what has happened, as you mentioned. So we, our team goes through, has gone through every daily report. You know, and it began implementation on February 15th. That's much more than two months. And our overall assessment, based on that, is that a majority of these have been committed by the Russian separatist forces. So one of the latest statements from the OSC spokesperson is visited many heavy weapons, that, that the uh, mission visited many heavy, heavy weapons sites on both sides and have reported missing weaponry. So they mentioned both sides. I'm Just in her past little two months that she wants to talk about, there's been reports of Russian weapons being moved to the border, being moved to the front line, being moved back, being moved across the Russian border again. Consistently, it never stopped. The ceasefire had no effect on what the Russian separatists were doing. None. Something that you never do. That's not true. I have repeatedly said that we call on both sides here to uphold the Minsk agreement. They both agreed to on them, but, but what they're actually doing, you never criticized. As, as I said yesterday, a majority of these are committed by Russian separatist forces, so by death. Why don't you pretend the good guys are the bad guys like we do? Definition that means a minority are committed by the other side. I, I also said that yesterday as well. When you've asked about this in the past, you and, uh, and also Jeff, uh, which seems to have changed today, is that prior to today, you had said that the vast majority, the overwhelming majority, Today, you're saying just the majority. There's, is that, I, is that dependent? No, on? it's not. You haven't I'm not trying to. He doesn't look Hazarian at all, does he? He is always nitpicking semantics. He does not go a single briefing without trying to nitpick semantics and give people a hard time just for saying one thing one day and saying the same thing another day with a couple words different that are also thin and M. So you still think. Still, the U.S. government's assessment of the vast and overwhelming majority of violations are coming from the That's certainly my understanding. And I would also point but that's out. Not what that's not what okay. you said. I, I, mean, I just want to make sure. Thank that... you for being very. No, I, I appreciate that. But I also think, Matt, it's important Jeez. to remember the big picture here and the context of what is happening between the September Minsk Agreement and the February Implementation Plan. Combined Russian separatist forces seized hundreds of square kilometers of Ukrainian territory in direct contravention to the agreement they had just signed. Uh, the OSCE cannot get access to separatist-controlled areas to verify the ceasefire, and I have this map up here I'm happy to give anyone afterwards. It shows the area the Russian and separatist combined forces are preventing the OSCE from even getting to. So I think it's important, again, to step back and take a look at the bigger context here. Let's let Matt ask his question. question. I'm not... The of the word vast or significant or substantial from the front of the word majority doesn't... I'm happy to say substantial, significant, vast, whatever, whatever word you would like. In providing access. So in the last two months, it's not just the rebels that are... Why are you choosing two months? I'm, I'm because curious. I read, uh, we read the daily reports from... The well, there are some from before two months, though. J just just as, as an example, to give you numbers. Okay. So 18 violations by the Ukrainian uh, forces. Well, that's not what the reports say, though. By the, rebels. the reports do not assign blame. So you're assigning blame based on their numbers. The reports do not assign blame. To be but, very but clear, I've read the reports as well. The same thing. Based on a, a whole of analysis. You're analyzing. Several of the OSCE have been caught and dismissed for being paid by Russia. And there's a couple of them, and you can just hear what the statements that they're saying. They're either playing along with Russia, or they're playing wrong to keep their asses alive. Playing along. Yeah, they're playing wrong, all right. So just be very clear, that's your analysis. 
Right, right, right. In public domain. Right, everyone but, but wait, let me finish. To be clear, that's your analysis of what the OSC is reporting. The OSC does not say X number of violations by either side. The OSC does not say those in those reports. If you want to see this map, this so red part. Wait, no, let me finish. Number. This red part right here is the area that the Russian separatist forces won't let OSCE monitors in. How? And it's funny to that effect because the OSCE is supposed to be assigning blame, but they're afraid of Russia. I wonder why. Crimea is here. Mariupol's here. Ukraine is this big. This big. This is Kiev right here on her shoulder. This is what Russia has invaded so far, plus Crimea. This is where nobody's allowed. No journalists, nobody. You have the area where the... Yes, it's this, very, it's this very tiny yellow tip right there, and I'm happy to give this to you after the briefing. Where, where is that? Just the tip. It comes from the British government. I'm happy to give this to you after the briefing. But not yes. from the OSC, right? It doesn't come from the OSC, does it? We can move on. Yes. Oh, sure, yes. The head of the Four Shaker Black earlier today called for a food blockade on the Donbass region. He said until the terrorists give let up. Me just, let me just point out a correction to vast amounts of propaganda. European colonialism was after Islamic murderous conquest. Okay? The British, in particular, civilized areas that just treated children like livestock. And I mean in the worst ways. He asked the Ukraine citizens that they are obligated to move to Ukraine free territory. Uh, do you agree with these proposals? I'm sorry, I hadn't seen those. I'm happy to check the 13th. Russia. Russia. Oh, great. Uh, yesterday mm -hmm. there was a report the Pentagon is seeking to ease sanctions on the RD 180s. Rockets? They need the rockets. Uh, what is your uh, take? I haven't heard of that. I'm happy to point to the Pentagon. Uh, your statement uh, okay. on the shelling of, uh, of uh, Marinka, right? You had a, you made a statement yesterday. Correct. About that. Yeah. Did you have a statement? Uh, do you have anything to say about uh, the shelling of the city of Donetsk the day before, on June second? Okay. There was heavy shelling on okay. June second. I'm happy to check into that question. Donetsk is where they've been doing the stage shellings for the past year. For a year, they've been caught over and over again. And she doesn't feel the need to answer the fucking question because of the never cry wolf effect. You know what I'm saying? How many times are you gonna bullshit somebody and they're supposed to take you seriously? Why why do you focus only on the violations by the rebels? Because they're invading. I pointed out a number of aggressive violations into Ukrainian government territory across the ceasefire line. Uh, just in the past 24 hours. I'm happy to look into any report. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, she's way too fair, actually. You give me, and to make a comment, make a comment on it based on the facts on the ground uh, and what we actually see there. And have choose to focus on one thing and not the other. I'm glad that that's your opinion, but again, well, we uh, call it like we see it, and, and we have to see uh, what's happening. Our show. Mubarak. Mubarak, correct. Uh, is that, that just happened in the last two hours? Uh, yeah. Well, let me check with our. Yeah. So, back during the heady days of the Israeli Palestinian uh, All right. So, back to that crap. That's not really what this is about. So, hope y'all enjoyed. I might be doing this if I see any more lively discussions in the near future. Um, hope the quality wasn't too low. Sorry about the volume. Um, anything important on the internet, 
generally has low volume. Hmm. Always somebody in their midst. Always somebody. Like and subscribe, people. Like and subscribe.